Hi, everybody. Here we are. This is our second podcast. Jennifer Schaefer and yes. yours truly. And Jennifer Schaefer, you can find at jenniferschaefer.com. I don't know if I said that last time. Actually, you can't find her there. You can try to find her there. <laughs> okay. So last week, I don't remember anything we talked about or who we talked about because the world's been in chaos for John Lennon. Oh, we talked to John Lennon. That's right. Anthony Bourdain and Anthony William Shakespeare. Bourdain. Yes. Anthony Bourdain was saying send love to Italy. And he was saying like, so between William Shakespeare saying Anthony Bourdain saying gratitude, William Shakespeare saying write it out and John Lennon saying sing it. Excellent. And it really when you start singing things like how grateful you are about just being able to go to the, you know, I'm like overlooking the water, whatever. I'm very grateful for where I'm at. And the fact that I could do my work remotely. I'm super grateful. That's so cool. Um, but you start, if you put it in a song, then it becomes even better. It's just sweet. It, yeah. No. Um... It, comes the loop in your head is my point versus the other stuff like i won't watch the news but i'm very aware of the news i'm very aware of what's going on do you know what i mean yeah also because we we did talk to uh people on the flip side about the coronavirus you know and that was not part of our podcast but we did that one-on-one -on -one. and i posted it on richmartini.com which is you know conversation with jonas salk the famous uh biologist which okay. You know, yeah. you were able to figure out that we wanted to talk to a biologist. And then he gave us some very specific and very interesting kind of healthy uh, solutions, how to keep your immune system up. Um, like zinc? Yeah, he right? talked about uh, a combination of drinking or, or in, and synthesizing. And he talked about elderberry and aloe vera juice and acai. Uh, like a berry antioxidant, and you mix that all together. It's a, you know, and we I put that up online. But I was thinking about this last night because it popped into my head. We also talked to people on the other side about creating an immunity, uh, sort of mentally and emotionally and physically, doing sort of a meditation. And I had asked you at the time what they recommended in terms of. I was very specific. I was asking about a particular meditation called TUMO. But what okay. they answered, as often I ask a question and they answer with what I should have asked, they gave right. us a meditation that's related to Tonglen. And Tonglen being the meditation that Richard Davidson had studied at University of Wisconsin, where it shows that you can cure depression and uh, symptoms of depression by doing this meditation. And you talked about what the meditation was, which was sort of sitting down and calling upon the healing light of the universe mm -hmm. in through you and then bringing it up again, almost like on a return. Like, like a lotus a flower. Eight. Sorry? A lotus flower. A lotus flower, yeah. And that I, I, I don't, I know you didn't say that, but you're absolutely right. That's, that's the description. Right now. Yeah. Okay, lotus flower. And so that idea of, bringing the light through you and then bringing it around again. And the idea behind that, and, and it's important for us to say, this is not something that's religious, but at the mm -hmm. same time, it's spiritual, which we don't have to separate those words, science and spirituality, because they're two sides of the same coin. So the idea that you can just meditate and visualize healing light coming through you and then circling around and going out to everyone that's around you. It's mm -hmm. a way to sort of to slow things down, to center, to focus, and scientifically proven that it will cure depression and symptoms of depression, which include being locked up in a house and being chased around by a cat or whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to bring, so last night, um, a couple of things happened, including okay. that, which was I got this sort of tap on the shoulder, like, and, and I suddenly heard, you know, yes, correct, tell them to stay home. We heard that 
first and foremost. It sounds weird to hear it from somebody on the flip side, but that's what they said. Stay home. I heard it a lot. Every time that I, every time that I do a reading for my, you know, or read myself, uh -huh. um, that's something that I look in, you know, I look into and it says, you know, make sure everybody stays home. Yeah. You know, and I've been saying it when people are like, oh, come on. Or, oh, I'm like, no. Like, I, my kids are like, well, at least you're happy now that people are backing up the fact that you don't want us to go anywhere. I'm like, no, believe <laughs> right. me. I want you guys out of here. But that's, well, not, that's not, I don't want to get sick. And I shopped through somebody that was sick the other day. Very dear friends of mine have it. And they don't know if they got it before Aspen or after Aspen. They just, you know, they had to wait several days to even get the results back. And then they got the results back and that was it. They're like, what do we do? Like they know to quarantine. They were quarantining, quarantining themselves and talked to everybody they knew that they could have seen. They didn't right. see me, but everybody they spent time with and almost all of them have it. And, but the rest of them were asymptomatic where they actually have the fever and then they get better and then it gets worse and then they get better. I mean, it just goes on. Yeah. It's well, statistically, we know that 80% of the people who, do, who will get it, let's say, will have milder symptoms, 80%. And then it's the 20% we're concerned with and, and people are stressed over, and, and rightfully so. And, but just to remind people that it's not just people on this side saying stay home, right? Flatten the curve. Right. But people right. on the flip side. And I was surprised to hear that. I mean, that was the first thing that you said when we talked about it. And it wasn't really... I was just asking for a bio, biologist to come forward who I was aware, you know, that had a history with, I mean, obviously with polio, but to ask Jonas Salk, what's your advice, sir? And his first thing out of his lips, let's call it that, um, yeah. was stay home. But I also just, as I was meditating or thinking about it last night in the middle of the night, suddenly it popped into my head, not only stay home, but protect yourself inwardly, spiritually, call upon this healing light, center yourself, focus on generating this kind of healing energy. Now, scientifically, the meditation called TUMO, T-U-M-M-O, has right, been that's... shown to, to, to raise a person's temperature to a point of like 103 degrees, these monks who do it. And I don't know how they do it, but I asked you, how do they do it? And you said, breath work. And if you wouldn't possibly know that, but that is the technique that you need to use. And on the uh, blog post that I put on richmartini.com, I included uh, that breathwork guy. His name is uh, Hoff, H-O-F. They featured him on a Goop episode recently, but I think his name is Will, Will Hoff. Wim Hof, something like that. But this is an amazing guy who has taken breath work into this nth degree. And, and I found him online teaching TUMO. So wow. it's to say that what we're talking about, and Jennifer, you know, by no stretch of the imagination is sitting around trying to look up what does TUMO mean. But TUMO... I'm reading no, because I forget what it was you're even talking about. It has nothing to do with, I don't even well, that's know my what point. that is. No. That's no. my point, which is, you know. It's breath work. It's breath yeah. work that you need to do. Well, I don't remember a, bringing that up. But I yeah, no, I it just popped back into my head. But there is a book called Mind Science, Robert Thurman. The Dalai Lama sponsored it. And they talk about this particular unusual meditation that they've scientifically guys with MRI stuff on their head, did the meditation, raise their temperature to 103 degrees. Mm -hmm. it, and you can watch it on YouTube. You can watch people being measured. Yeah. Yeah. So that's me. kind of what I was asking you. And you, you said breath work. So if people could learn that as well, and I know it sounds insane, but the idea of, I don't know how to do it, but this kind of breathing that Wim Hof is going to teach you, actually raises your temperature to such a degree to fight off infections. That's the point. But, and what I thought we'd talk about today, here we are preambling, um, what I thought we'd talk about today is last night, I don't know what time it was, probably three or four in the morning, I was suddenly woken by a host of people who wanted to 
converse. And at first, I'm going to stand up and close this window. At first, so I thought, good. sorry. At first, I thought, <laughs> I'm trying to field answers. Like, uh -huh. what? Uh, wait a second. I don't know how you're supposed to deal with that. Let me think about that. You know, and I couldn't. There were so many of them. This must be your, the way your world is. And I asked our friend, Luana, on the flip side, to seat them all and to tell them to get in line so that we could talk today. And suddenly, I, it went from like a cacophony of sound to complete utter silence. But I was aware of it. So I heard that like, ah, help, you know, blah, 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 don't forget to tell. And oh, Jennifer needs to know, and da 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 blah, 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 blah. And it just went to complete silence. So, so I, go ahead. Every night, it is so, the veil is so thin and so thick. And luckily, I know what I'm looking at, even though I don't. I don't converse with it because I know then it's just, then you're toast. Because then that's when you get flooded with thoughts. It's just like when I go to a cemetery, I can go there. It's the most peaceful place because dead people don't hang out there. Right. But if I look at a name, it's like a calling card that brings them right back, you know, to start talking. That right. being said, every time that it's so much because they can play with, I mean, because the energy, like you can feel it on your head. You can feel it. Like I put my hand up and I can't even see it. Kind of like this, actually. Yeah, Wait. or well, zooming. But, but the second I say, just like what you said, I always, I'm like, please, I need to go to sleep. Please allow me to go to sleep. That's the last thing I always remember. Really? Yeah. And it's not that they leave. It's just that your mind overrules anything that you, anything that you, like your mind overrules everything. Yeah, so, it shifts. Well, I think it's also possibly it's shifting the frequency. So you right. Well, it goes to the same thing as if you don't believe, you won't see it. Right. So, but if you believe it, then you have the option of it happening. Right. Yeah, yeah. So your mind has complete control over everything when it comes to a, when you allow it. So, like that. My whole point was if they don't go away. Nothing goes away. It's just your mind cuts it off. That's all. Yeah. Well, I, we've talked about this because I remember asking you about, you know, how you leave behind your cr criminal cases that you work with. And we talked about oh, yeah. that foyer of having, of going into the foyer of an, like an office in between your office to, you know, consult and talk to people over there. And then when you come back into your office, mm -hmm. you close that door. But I was going to say, I think it's related to frequency. You know, like if you have a ham radio, you can dial it, you can dial it in and you can catch a frequency and so if suddenly there's a lot of a cacophony of noise you can just turn the dial slightly and you don't hear any sound so right I, so i was going to ask luana to come forward luana? and take a seat okay she's right behind you okay she's very in good italy. she's in italy well this over my shoulder is a photograph of a church in uh, at Lozzo di Cadore, and it's a few miles from where my grandfather was born. And this church was built in the fifth century, and it's where my grandfather was baptized. And it's kind of a famous place because oh. I know the Pope went to visit it, but it's an unusual place. Um, yeah. Fifth century church. I've been in there. I actually spoke to the priest who runs the joint. And I got a copy of my grandfather's birth certificate. Of course, my grandfather wasn't born in the fifth century, but you know, 19, uh, no, what was he? 1893 or something. Anyway, so Luana, thank you for coming. And if you don't mind, we'd like to interview a little bit. First, I wanted to ask you a simple question. Are you happy with our new book, you, Backstage Pass? Go ahead. Can you pause for one second? Can sure. You pause it for one second. Pausing. Sure. Okay, we're back. And Jennifer went for a swim in Bora Bora. Okay, so the question to Luana is, my dear, dear Luana, yes. Argo, Anders, are you happy with the introduction as it is in the book Backstage Pass 3? And She's if not, laughing. what would you like She's to say? Laughing. She, she was laughing when you said that, before you said that. She just like a... I don't know if it's a fake laugh, like, oh, hold on. <laughs> it's allowed.
Yeah. You've changed it like five times, she said. A few, yeah. yeah. Is she, she happy with the way the structure is? She says it's a lot better than the second book, or first or second book with the stru okay. structure. Okay. So I don't know, okay. what, did you, what did you do differently? Um, I think what she means is it's probably, you know, more edited or more put together. <laughs> You're more put together, she says. <laughs> well, let's put oh, it this way. Go ahead. A, no, it's because, well, you worked, about, you worked on getting the repetition out, uh -huh. right? Anything that's repetitive. And then Correct. she also said that you, oh, I'll say it again. Okay, based upon the questions you've been asked about the first couple of books, you've incorporated that into this book? Correct. That's true. Okay. Ding. I didn't know that. okay. ding, ding, ding. Well, what I've done is, you know, in, we've had some really okay. wide, go ahead. Did you tell the, okay, so just so you guys know, he hasn't discussed what, I don't even know what's going into this. No, she, Jennifer no. doesn't know no what's idea. going on. Yeah. Do you, do you think that I've, know everything that's happening or everything that's going on like i don't know anything about other than that it's our interviews and no interviews it's been, we've done these interviews but of course i've been editing it for the past maybe year um since we the last you know and then we conclude interviews as we go along certainly um there is an interview where i interview or we interview kobe bryant and i asked the questions in italian because i knew that he spoke italian and then he gave us the answers. So that's, that's probably our last interview that we've done. I included another interview with Luana because I wanted her to be able to end the book, you know, with her oh. story. Oh, did we already do that or no? We're doing that now? Uh, no, I did. I did. It's the last chapter. Got it. Got it. So I'm she's just curious if she's happy. Or not. She's ecstatic. She loves the humor, and she also loves how heartfelt, how compassionate you were with it, and how much you've grown throughout this process, she said, and that the love that you have not only for mankind and the compassion, and then she showed me the Dalai Lama, um, you have that for spirit. You have that for people on the other side. You've given them a voice. It's interesting. She's like, if you think about it, she's putting the thoughts in my head, I know. But if you think about it, no one is bold enough to talk to them, right? And you've leveled the playing field for people to talk to their loved ones and to people on the other side. They don't realize that, you know, if they're musicians, if they're already channeling somebody that's over there or their higher self even. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And we've, this is recurring theme in, I don't want to interrupt Luana, but it's a recurring thing in the book. You know, Prince comes through, Robin Williams comes through, and they talk about that frequency that they have with people back here on the planet that are friends, loved ones, but also mm -hmm. other musicians, other comedians. And it's like, they're so accessible at all the time but yeah. by and large we find you and i both meet people who are just not aware that we could talk to them they're aware that they can talk to us we aren't yeah. aware that they can communicate that we can talk to them. Right. yeah and so that's she what the you. that's pretty much what the book is and she loves you and she loves that sherry puts up with you <laughs> Well, my poor wife. And she uh, says that you're, we love her. You know that. And she says that your daughter is mentioning her. She's grown up to be a beautiful girl, beautiful woman. A terrific actor, too, as well. She says that she has lots of help up there. Very good. I think, yeah, says, no, I appreciate that, Lou. That, she says that's like the circle. She goes, because if you don't make money, she will. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, yeah. Well, she had a, one, a wonderful dream the other night. I won't say what it was, but she had an amazing dream. And we were, I had to write it down. Like, what? Wow, that's really cool. If that turns out to be the case. Well, and by the way, who said in the beginning that she was going to be an actor? Okay, I did. <laughs> you did. And you've you known remember? me. Yeah. I've known you for so long. You're like, that's the last thing I want 
for her to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, Anna, because you didn't want at the time. You're just like because you know you said some things that were funny, like. It's so challenging to get into Hollywood. Sure, and the acting and the agents and all that stuff. Right, right. Classic. But I gotta, I gotta tell you, I saw a film that she starred in, like a short film that she made for. Uh -huh. And uh, I went to the Warner Brothers, my old studio, and I sat there in the Warner Theater with a bunch of other film students, and I watched her come on screen and command this movie. For I mean, she stars in it. She plays multiple people within one care. I was shocked. And I, you know, what do you say other than, Oh my God, you're really good. I'm, I'm startled. Anyway, she's it's great. all her. It's on her. They been, nothing to do with they've, me. they've been watching over her. Well, that's great to hear. So yeah. Luana, now, now that I have you sitting in this chair, if you could describe to our audience what the process is in terms of you helping people communicate, I mean, I know there's other avatars out there like yourself who help people to talk to their loved ones on the other side. But in our case, you've been this incredible conduit where you, right. you're the one who helps people who sometimes show up and they're like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know how to talk. Just if you could talk a little bit about the process. How do you help people's frequency adjust from where you are to where we are? Oh, it's so sweet. She showed me all this energy from everybody up there helping a person try to talk to us. And I, so I'm like, so it's a group effort. And she goes, oh, yeah. It's an enormous effort to get. Um, let's get it. My dad helps a lot. It's interesting because he showed it up. He knows it's in my noggin. So. He'll say, do this or say that kind of thing, because then it, because I'll recognize it because they have oh, to I go see. through. So he's telling right. someone, give her an image of a horse. That'll right. make her remember the time that she went horseback riding. Correct. Yeah. And so Luana, she says it's, it's that's where it's a whole group effort. Um, right. And my grandmother. She's like, I know you best. I'm like, yes, you do. <laughs> well. Daddy. She's been stuck around you all these years. Um, but yeah, we'll this is, that. Oh my God. Well, but this is an interesting point that I wanted to talk about, which is during one of the sessions in Architecture of the Afterlife, Art Bell, you know, the talk show guy, came through while I was speaking to his assistant who was on the, live on the air. And she said, he's here now. I can see him. She's not a medium, but she could see him. And she said, he's asking you a question, Rich. Like he, Art Bell interviewing me live on the air from the flip side. And the okay. question was, he said, I'm having a hard time communicating with her or other people. What do you recommend? And I said, apropos of what we do, I said, well, sometimes it's easier to, to see an image than it is to hear an image. Because for sound, you have to create airwaves and you have to do, you know, the, it has to hit the ear. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It's much easier to tap into an engram, you know, some part of your brain that has a memory of a horse or of a, you know, a war or Elvis or whatever the thing is that comes to mind. And so as I said that, she, this is Heather Wade, mm -hmm. said, I just got a download of all the times that he's been trying to speak to me since he crossed over. She had about a dozen images that popped into her mind. Yeah. Like she broke her leg and he was there. She remembered she felt somebody's hands on her ankle and she was thinking, what's that? But now saw it from his point of view because he gave her those images of seeing herself on the couch with the broken ankle, you see? So it's almost right. like, that's what I'm asking, Lou. So bringing that back to you, you're helping them. And how do you do that? Is it to tap into the images in our head? Is it in our Akashic record? Or where are those images? It's all of that. It's to have the heart connection or have some, like it's, you know how you want your best friend to meet somebody that you love and adore? Mm -hmm. That's what it's like. And so since Luana knows everybody up there, you know, she brings people, so let's just, let's use Prince as an example. 
So I don't know Prince. You met Prince, but I yeah, love well, Prince. I didn't know Prince, yeah. But she's bringing through Prince and going, oh my gosh, you got to talk to this person, you know, because it's so great. Like, it's so great. So there's the heart connection, the heart connection of somebody on the other side, even though you don't have to know them, is my point. Yeah. Um, two, depending upon if it's like somebody like me who has, thank you, who has the ability, everyone what, does, but I have a different- that compliment? She said I had a super ability. <laughs> so- I love I'm, hearing. Your secret I conversation. <laughs> oh, it's me crazy. Because I have another question for her because when I get things that are out in the future, when I get when I'm looking for a body or when I'm looking for something, I'm really yeah. good. You can ask all my clients. Super good about knowing where lost jewelry is, about, you know, you name it. Don't know where my kids are all the time. It's a whole different story. <laughs> but so your question so so number one is the heart. Number two, she says that um It is a rodeo. Okay. Oh, thank you. She takes, I love how she brings me back to what we're talking about. She takes somebody like me is a different frequency because of my transis transistor radio that you called it. Okay. Yeah. Compared to somebody that doesn't even know it exists. It's a whole different, it's a whole different length. So there's different languages for different types of people. Sure. All right, well, let's... Yeah. Go ahead. So, it's much easier to talk to me, because I know that they're there, than it is to talk to somebody that just doesn't believe that they're there. Right, and it would uh, dismiss an image that they're hearing in their head. Or see. They'll need more people to help the person that doesn't know. Okay. So, let's go back to her comment just a second ago, and I love overhearing you talk to my friend Luana because it's like, I get what she's saying just from your reaction to what she said. So in this case, she mentioned it's a rodeo. And you just take that image for a second of a rodeo, which I- Of course, you know, somebody's yeah. taking a rope and lassoing. Lassoing, rodeo. but, and I've worked on a film called Cowboy Up, where I spent like six weeks running around to different rodeos. It's a casino of, you know, people everywhere doing all kinds of things. So now, yes. you know, it's bull riding and it's clowns dressed up and there's families. Okay, so now let's just take somebody from the rodeo and pull them here. And that's a person, he's got a big coincidences. hat on, all he knows is right. cowboy. That's where they make coincidences happen. Yeah, and but I'm saying in the cowboy's mind, his point of view, his worldview, all the things, experiences he's had, he's really familiar with it, what it's like being on the horse, what the smell of a horse is, riding across the field. So he's got oh, his yeah. unique, you know, memory of horse riding, you see? Mm -hmm. And so that's, so the image might come to you like, oh, he's riding a horse, but his image and his memory of it might be slightly different. And it's like, you have to keep unpacking the image like asking more questions, you know, is this related well, to that is what you've taught me. You've taught me how to not just, you know, not just to take what I see and that's it. You've taught me how to go, okay, wait a second. Like, yeah, why am I getting this image? Why yeah. am I getting this image? Like, okay. Like, you know, I told someone when they were going to retire and then I think we discussed this last time. I'm like, I'm like, you're going to be gone out from school. It was a choir teacher. You're going to be gone from school. I don't see you, I don't see you retiring. Like I see you leaving early. Well, I never looked to see, he did leave early. I told him exactly when he was going to leave three years ago. I said, you're going to leave like in February or March because that makes no sense. We're going to Italy. But he goes, why would I do that and still go to Italy? I'm like, I don't know. Well, that's because everybody left school. It closed down because of the coronavirus. I didn't see him at the school. Ah, uh, yeah. But I didn't and, look, I didn't look to see if anybody else was there. Right. Right. You're supposed to be in school right. at that time, right? right. So I didn't think she looked at it. He goes, you were right, Jen. He goes, I didn't finish out the school year at right. school. And of, and of course, that's why people who predict the future, they'll see a likely outcome, but they don't really get the exact measure of what it is. They only because no one's there to ask them questions, like where's everybody else, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I'm also asking Luana about that 
pulling the mental image and, and she said it's it's everywhere so it's in the akashic library let's say it's in your brain so uh, you know you ask somebody about a previous it lifetime it. so there's <laughs> Wow. Okay. So you just showed me like throwing something into like my head, like a spark into my head and it lands somewhere and it sparks that image. So they know the image is in there and they throw it and that's what sparks it for me to see uh, it. So it's literally in your head. Yes. That's great. Okay. That's what I was asking. So it's almost like, well, and, and I've heard this too. And Luana, correct me if I'm wrong. People said to us, we asked somebody, what do you miss about being on the flip side? I think it was Dick Clark of all people. We asked Dick Clark, it's in the book Backstage Pass. We asked, what do you miss about being on the planet? And he said, I miss not knowing information about people when I meet them. And what he, what he said was, you know, when you meet somebody for the first time, you're like, who are you? What's your name? Where are you from? What's your background? The excitement, yeah. but the excitement of learning from somebody's everything. But over on the flip side, when you run into someone, you access the entire journey, the entire lifetime they've had. So it's like there's no mystery. Now, is that correct, Lou? Is that kind of what you're tapping into? Interesting. <laughs> yes, unless you don't belong to our planet. Okay. I understand that. I and don't. For the, for the people out there who are like, what? Um, <laughs> what she means is people who normally incarnate on other planets. Let's, Lu Luana, you correct me if any of this is wrong, but people who normally incarnate on, on different planets. We've talked to those people before. And I talked to a lot of them in uh, Architecture of the Afterlife because I'm talking to council members who appear as if they're from some other planet. And then I ask them questions like, so where are you from? And they describe it. And they give this really detailed information about it. But that aside, and we've talked about this last time about taking the word aliens out of our syntax and language because everybody that incarnates is coming from somewhere else. But I think what Luana is saying is that if you run into somebody whose background has only been incarnating in the Pleiades or in some other place out there, you're not going to get their references. So you can't just right. pull a horseback ride because they've never seen a horse. Right? Right. Okay. Yes. See, this, is our, this is our weird conversation. We skim the surface, but then we stop and fish for something really yeah. profound and just yank it yeah. out of the water. So, and what's even better is that I won't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm recording. All right. So Luana, um, I don't want to, I, you know, I know this is entertaining, but last night I had the impression that there were a crowd of people that wanted to come through and talk to us. And, and is there anybody? And did, the answer could be no. The answer could be yes. No, there was, or there is. So let's ask, and Lou, two you're, the, two, two you're the one with the backstage passes. You allow whoever it is to come forward. Go ahead. My dad wants to come forward. Please do, Jim. I was quoting you this morning, and I let me just tell you, Jim, before you finish this, Jennifer, uh, you know okay. the quote. He gave it to us and nostalgia. I nostalgia. And what? Nostalgia. Nostalgia. But he he gave us the quote, and I just want to explain it to people who've never seen me or you before. We were sitting in a restaurant and you started talking about your dad who had just he had passed away. And I could see the emotion and how it was preventing us from even speaking. And I, I said, Well, let's ask him a question. How do you help people with grief? And you said, the answer I'm hearing is turn grief to nostalgia. And then I asked appropriately, what does that mean? And you said, I don't know. And I said, well, let's ask your dad. And then you said, he's telling me 
that grief is only sad memories. Nostalgia is both sad and happy memories. And when you can move grief to nostalgia, you begin the healing process. Now, I, I quoted him today, this morning, about that, and someone wrote me immediately, thank you. So that was for you, Jim. Thank you. That's on Quora, by the way. You're the I'm one sorry, Jim. Talk. It's so, I love him. Hold on a second. Wow. He just said he's glad that my mother is safe. And then he showed me how fast they got married. He showed me, he's like, I'm like, so did you plant? Like, was that all planned? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> I mean, think about it. She's with, we don't have to worry. If, I would be worried sick about her if she was by herself. And now she's married to someone that's taking care of her. Um, and she's happy, which is also healing. That's lovely. That's lovely. And so for, for audience who doesn't know what you're referring to, just in a nutshell, um, your mom met somebody while you were, I think, on vacation somewhere? You were like out of the country or something? She's been a couple days with them, but she's known them for like 18 years or yeah. something. Somebody that she's known. Right. And, and somebody my dad knew and liked. Yeah. Oh, and then that's his, great. His wife passed away five years ago, and my dad passed away three years ago. So they and connected, he, and then it was a whirlwind romance, and now they're happily married. They're happily married. Yes, she wanted sex because you can't get married. <laughs> you can't have sex unless you get married. So she got married. I don't want to talk about that. I'm just too happy. For her. Okay, but I, you know, all right. So yeah. Jim, is that what you wanted to talk to her about? Just or or did, or was that was there more than that? I will. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I have a tendency not to reach out to my dad. Like I reach out, like I know he's here when we talk to him. It's yeah. kind of weird like that. I just that, and he's like, don't be afraid to reach out to me. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's like, he, and then he showed me a picture of me and it, you know, when we were discussing all this energy and he goes, that's me, that's us. He goes, don't be afraid to talk to us. Great. Like, that's great. And I think it's important people to hear, which is your loved ones are, are available for solace, for information. Wow. And the, the bigger picture too, is that, I don't have to have you as my medium, even though I feel more comfortable with that. Right. Does right. that make sense? We've talked about people that. No, and it's. Yeah, people don't need me. It was just a reminder. People don't need me. Maybe, you know, but they, they all can talk to their loved ones. They don't need to have me. Right. To talk to their loved ones. No. And what you're referring to is the fact that you've said it a number of times, which is when your dad shows up, it, because I ask relentless questions, because I'm curious what's going on with him, you have mentioned that you feel like it, it's easier for you to access him when I'm asking these kind of ridiculous questions. But, it feels more real for me, yes. Yeah, and so he's trying to say, you don't need martini, come on. <laughs> you would never say that, but... He says, Sep, putting this aside, that I should ask him more, you know, I should ask him questions. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. for those who haven't read Backstage Pass, the most fascinating, uh, one of the most fascinating sessions was when we asked him about. He just, he just went like this, which means I love you. Okay, very I good. Love. And I that was you. his sign. That was going to be you. his sign. Well, I he, love. we asked him. To go to Jennifer's library, is Akash, her Akashic library, and to find a passage within her book, her life story, that was something that he remembered, but she didn't. 
you see the construct of the question? It's not something that Jennifer could remember. It can't be cryptomnesia. can't be something that she has talked about. Oh, remember that time when I was five and bobbity-boo happened? I'm asking him, your father, on the flip side, to show you a memory that, are you okay? I just miss him. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> see, this is why you need me. To talk to your dad because, you know, know. we're getting beyond that. It's like, oh, it's just hard sometimes to think he's gone. He's, not, he's gone. not gone. I know. He's he just gone. Got it. Dude. I know. I'm sorry. Was, okay. Well, Jim, I'm just, I'm re repeating this story, which is we were in Jennifer's library and you were describing a book, your life, like your life story. And he reached into that book and pulled out of the, out of a memory that you didn't know, which was when you were a little girl and you suddenly announced that uh, your grandfather, his father was ill, and that's why you needed to move to California. And he was, that was the moment when he realized there was something unusual about you, his daughter. And he showed you us that memory. It was great. Oh, he did. So. Oh. Yeah. He's outside of time and space. Yes, he is. Very good. Yep. Okay, Lou, wow. I'm going to turn it back okay. to you. Can you push it, pause for just one second? I can. I can. Pause. Rich. Pause. Wait. A okay. Okay, we're back. Um, Lou, who else needs to speak to us on the flip side? I have somebody. Well, now it's your dad. Oh, <laughs> everybody. The dad party. Uh, what's up, dad? Can you give me your dad's name again? A Romeo or Charlie? He went by both. He's going to take Romeo for 200. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Romy. Romy. Oh, you said you did an excellent job cleaning up the first page or whatever we talked about before. I did. Well, he, the book is dedicated to him. He was an architect and was the architecture of the afterlife. And what Jennifer's referring to is I That's asked it. him, Dad, what do you think about the book? And he said, there's a mistake on the front page. And I went, what? And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, my God, I missed it. And you know, thank God to have an editor on the flip side <laughs> helping you figure out. And I, had not, I didn't see the book at that point. You knew nothing about what was on yeah, the Yeah, you page. hadn't seen it. Yeah, <laughs> no. It's, it's funny yeah. because people, people think so much that because we talk so, you know, we do this. We've been doing this for years, but I don't know. Five years. And what's unusual is that, you know, probably the first time I met Jennifer, I – had of course jaded skeptic hollywood guy i had to in the back of my mind be thinking you know what could she know what might she have heard is she pulling this out of my head or whatever that is and then at some point within the first meeting she you know slapped me with a fact that only a person on the flip side could know and that was the first time for me to go oh my gosh I have stumbled into something like a cell phone to the flip side. And then since then, oh, you know, if you look at any of the books, Backstage Pass, you'll see verification after verification to the point where you stop focusing on the verification process and start focusing on content. What can I learn? Yeah. That's, that's why we're doing this. What can we learn from the flip side? So my dad aside, and dad, helpful, um, what do you want us to tell people? Is there stuff you want us to share? He said, wash your, he said, wash your hands. Okay. <laughs> like right. If you were like a little kid, make sure you wash your hands. Yeah, yeah. Um, By the way, have you seen Sanjay Gupta's uh, How to Wash Your Hands Like a Doctor? It's on YouTube. I highly recommend it. You know, it's this 22nd thing, but it's all, he also does this, and he does this, and then he does this, and then he does that, and that, stuff I never did. Oh, and this. <laughs> anyway, 
I I have not. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Public but I, my hand. Well, now you have. <laughs> now you, that's it. Had to rock exactly. between the wipes I use on everything and the hand sanitizer to go out. Because right. I don't even test gloves. Like you can use gloves, but even the gloves are. Blah. Right. I don't know. Right. Okay. Prince, I know you want to say something, buddy. What is it you want to say? Because you know, you were mentioned earlier. And you have come by our classes before, and I would be less than. Show me four. So I don't know what chapter or what page. Oh, or... chapter four. Oh, yes. Chapter four. All right, let me just tell you what he means. So I'm editing the book, and I get to chapter 30. And we're interviewing Robert Evans, the, the famous Hollywood producer, who I knew. I worked with a little bit, and, and his story's hilarious. And people are not going to believe this, but at some point, I invite Steve McQueen to come in and take his place to talk. And you say, Steve McQueen, whoever the Steve is, because I didn't say who it was, you said, whoever you're inviting in won't come in until he leaves. And, and then I had to explain that to you because Evans had stolen McQueen, no, McQueen had stolen Evan's wife, Ellen McGraw. And you didn't know that. No. And, and, so, and I didn't tell you who I was going to interview. But it was this weird thing. All right. But in the Evans interview, he says, make sure this is chapter one. And it was residing at chapter 30. And I was kind of like, eh, what does it matter? What do you know? And then I was like, wait a minute. I'm getting this message from the flip side. Make sure. Anyway, so I moved it to chapter one. But chapter one was our conversations with Aretha Franklin, which are very dramatic and very interesting. But I couldn't move Aretha back to the end of the book because she's so fantastic. And what she had to say was so verifiable, including that her niece was running her estate, et cetera, et cetera. So I moved it to chapter four. And that's when Prince shows up and he escorts her over to the other side once she passes on. And then he shows up again at her funeral. After the funeral, we did another session where now he escorts her back into our class. He is the one escorting Aretha to have a conversation with us. And the first conversation, she was very like, I don't know what we're doing or who, who are you people and why are we talking and whatever. That's like that old hat. Yeah. Old and hat. by the time the, the, you know, there's three parts of the chapter four and he's the guy who escorts her into each one of them. So thank you, Mr. I didn't Rogers even know Nelson. that. Did I know uh, that? How Did could I... you know that? You haven't even seen chapter four. So I'm just explaining. Oh, another thing is making sure that in the table of contents that you put, like if somebody, because um, some, I can't remember what it was, but make sure you put the page number. Oh, page numbers. Okay. Well, I won't know until I finish. Got it. Got, yeah. it. got it. Got it. That's right. No, no, but I, you're right. I normally don't because I just figure, eh, let people look it up themselves. They'll figure it out. Search. But because it, because it, changes the page numbers change when it goes to kindle obviously but when it goes to print yes i'll do that okay duly noted thank you flip side so prince people are going to wonder like what so describe to us if you don't mind sir what it's like to see me and uh jennifer here and luana chatting with you what is your perspective how do we look <laughs> to you he says it's quiet <laughs> <laughs> quiet even though there's a dog noise um fish bar was very loud but it doesn't matter because they hear our thoughts it's not the outside noise they see uh -huh. us getting mad about the outside noise right because sense? just to explain jennifer and i normally meet in a restaurant which is very noisy and you know i'm like what we love it we love it we love, we fish love our bar. restaurant yeah yeah but he's saying it's much quieter okay true in our minds to do this yeah they don't and how do them. how do we look to you, Prince? Do we do I look like this guy, or do I? Do you see somebody else, or what do you see? Um. He says I have a gorgeous light. 
Well, thank you. Oh, you. <laughs> when I work, when I work, that light emanates. And I've been told that too. Like not told like Well, let's ask about, them, what color is that light? Is it white? Is it is it yellow? Wait, is take it Take one guess. Take one guess what color it is for me. Purple? He said, "What's his favorite color?" <laughs> purple. Purple. So when Sorry, you I thought that was, I was like I'm like what is the color? He goes, "There's a purple with pink." Like purple and pink. That's like how purple. he sees you. But he also, hold on one second. Okay. So, oh, we were asking uh, Prince, uh, is that how you see us? Do you see Jennifer as a purple light with pink inside? Is that kind of what she's radiating for you? But then he shows me my eyes. Like, um, or is that another word for the soul? Hold on. <laughs> that's so interesting so he sees my eyes like the color of my eyes and i'm like so is that just the reflection of you know is that the windows to the soul and he goes no you can see the reflection of someone's beauty in their eyes hmm. which makes sense like their energy if you're angry you're that shows right yeah you can that in my eyes if you're happy that shows if you're it's the way it also reflects the way you look so give me a second That's interesting. So he says it's the heart that makes it. It's the heart that makes you beautiful. Hmm. Well, it seems like he's talking about a frequency. So like when he, you know, when your eyes sort of generate an emotion, it's the frequency of that emotion. And we've talked right. to him a lot about frequency in terms of how musicians kind of hang together on the flip side. Yeah. 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 And, We've asked him in the past about creating music over there. And where does that come from and how does he do it? And how would you describe it in terms of creating music with other people over there? How do you do that? It's getting together with all the same frequencies. And do they play the instrument that they were known to play down here on the planet or do they play an instrument or how does that work? What they do is they, thank you. It's like pulling out your favorite memory. Mm -hmm. of an instrument here that you played on earth. I see. So that's part of it. So if you experience that here, you can bring that up and teach it. I see. Well, this morning I saw George Harrison's son, Danny, playing a Tibetan bowl and singing a Beatles song and saying, let's all do this together. Let's all play and sing this song. And I'm just curious, is it any thought about that, Prince, or does anybody want to weigh in about doing that? My dog is trying to break through the door right now. Can oh, you? It's all right. Well, obviously, he wants to participate, and there's no reason he shouldn't. <laughs> and my cat was up on my, my computer dog like 10 minutes ago. All right, me hold on. I'm holding. Hello. Anyway, okay. hi. we're back. All right. Prince, 
I appreciate it. You're always welcome to join us. Is there anything else you want to add for anybody on the planet? That's why it's so important to make new memories. So important to make new memories. Are you happy with the book? <laughs> he says no, because I should be in it more. <laughs> I was just going to say, that's hilarious. Because I was like, you know, if he had said, oh, yeah, I'm fat. Well, you're throughout the book, but there is no. And you had a chapter in the last book. Yeah, I know. He said that, too. Okay. But he's, <laughs> so if we're like, he said, write this on the back. <laughs> goes, oh, put it on the back. of the, What does he want me to say? It is so instrumental in not fearing what you've done in the past or living in the past. Know that all those memories are there. You take only the good ones with you to recreate, to reform, to synthesize with. Say it again, show me again. So the only thing to do by stopping living in the past is by being present. I know it sounds like a cliche, but the way he's showing me, because if you live in the past, you're blocking all the new memories that could be coming in. Uh -huh. Whereas if you live, the pre live in the present, then you have this abundance of memories that could be coming. Okay. I'll try to put all that in the, the back of the book. I'll synthesize that. Is the there next one? one. The is next what? one. The next, the next one. one. Yeah, okay. All right. But I love that. You know, we did this once before. Um, people are fans of Hacking the Afterlife. I asked Jennifer to have some of the people that were in the book give us quotes for the book. So that's a quote that I will put on our book, as Prince says. Be present. Be present. Okay. You are a present. We'll give you the, we'll give you the most fun in the afterlife. <laughs> okay. Be a because present, you are, and you are a present. Fair. Be present, and you are a present. Right? Oh, you just, yes. Okay. Lou, me. we only got a few minutes left. Who else needs to come forward and talk to us? That was me as an etchy sketch again. Etch a sketch Bill, shake. Billy and Luana. Billy, Paxton, and Luana. Okay, thanks. Do you guys both and, want to take chairs? And the, other, and the other guy that was the atheist. Which is? Until the car ride. Oh, Harry Dean Stanton. Okay, we got the Big Love cast. Harry Dean Stanton, Bill Paxton, and our friend Luana. Well, let's start with who, Billy or Harry Dean? Wait, wait, wait. Is Harry Dean the one that was in Big Love too? Yeah. Who was Played the, that was had the goofy hat on, older guy. Yeah, and he's the guy yeah. who appeared. Okay. He's a good friend of Luana's. They appeared in many movies together. And I she know. He's making fun about. of me because I can't start. He's making you fun of me because I'm like creeper. <laughs> because he like got married to, like a twelve year old. He's like, that's not me. <laughs> in real oh, life. that's funny. And Bill um, has come forward with Harry in the past. It's almost like he's the entry point for us to talk to Harry. So let's ask Harry, being polite. Age age before beauty. Harry, what do you want to tell us? Technically, Billy's older. <laughs> He gets out of the flip side. Right. But, yeah, I guess. Because he side. passed before Harry. Right. All right. right. But, um, who? He says that some, somebody's come, somebody's with him now that wasn't there before, that has okay. passed away. All right, Harry, um, who's that? Give us an idea. First name, put an image in Jennifer's mind. Almost feels like Fred. Almost feels like a Fred, but not 
do you want to talk about Fred Roos? Is that who you're talking about, Harry? Tell the Jennifer, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Fred's not over there yet, but that could mean that Fred is connecting to you more than in the past. Is that correct? Yes. So our conversations about you and Luana driving with Fred Roos back in 1967 to the Monterey Pop Festival, right? Mm -hmm. That has allowed Fred to access you perhaps while he's sleeping. Yes. Oh, okay. Also, we spoke with Peter Fonda because Luana, of course, knew him and, and Harry Dean knew him and Bill came through that day as well once he crossed over. Um, and that's a chapter in the book. But what do you want to tell us, Harry Dean? So I'm glad you're hanging out with Fred more, but Fred's still here. He's the producer of The Godfather. Not really, a bunch of them. Not, not really he says. But I, he says he is, but there, he, he's not really. I, don't know no, I understand. He, he Consciously, if I asked him, he'd say no. I don't know what you're talking about. But while he's asleep, he's having a party with Harry Dean. And Jack Nicholson. And Jack. I know Jack. Okay, same thing. Jack's uh, on the planet. I talked to him, I don't know, a while ago, but before the, when Luana told me to call him, I did. And so, but the point is, Harry Dean. Harry Dean was a skeptic and an atheist. That's it. That's why he wanted to say it. He goes, I was, but now I'm talking to everybody. Okay. And, and Harry came through to talk to us a week after he passed away and before his memorial service. And I said, Harry, you were an atheist. Why, what was it like to realize there was an afterlife? And he told us this elaborate story, which is in Backstage Pass, about how he reached over there and got over there. But since then, he often shows up with Bill, because they were their friends and they worked together, to give us some point or to talk about something. And I know I quoted Harry Dean this morning on another post on Quora, because Harry Dean, the skeptic, the atheist, said to us, I said, what do you want me to tell people at your memorial service? And he told Jennifer to tell me, tell people to believe in the afterlife. And I laughed and said, Harry, all your friends were skeptics. All of them are atheists. None of them are right. gonna believe that I talked to you. And he said, then, Tell them, go ahead, you say what Harry Dean said. Harry, tell her again. Tell them it's easier to believe than spending your whole life trying not to believe. It takes Very good. energy. Was that Very what good. Well, okay. uh, the quote, and that's even a better way to say it, but it's identical. The quote that Harry gave us that day was tell people to believe in the possibility of an afterlife and yeah. they won't argue about it like I did my whole life. And he just said that again. And yeah. I know you're not aware of that memory of that, but anyway, he's right. Once you, even if you're a skeptic or an atheist or a fervent believer in your science or a fervent believer in religion, doesn't even matter. You can, if you allow that it's possible that you can connect with your loved ones on the other side, you allow that they still exist, mm -hmm. and that's possible. It changes the paradigm so you don't have to argue about it or stress about it or focus on it and allow yourself to sort of that it, it's a possible. Harry, is that what you wanted to say? Yes. <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that are scared out there. There's a lot of people that are afraid and they don't know. And then he's showing me a client, somebody that came somebody that came to me. Um somebody he loved passed away and he wanted to leave. He said that I was supposed to go with her. He wanted to leave the planet. And he's like, prove to me there's an afterlife. And I'm thinking, oh, if I don't prove it to him, I mean, it just, you know, you start going through that whole process. I'm like, I can't prove anything to you. It's something that comes from inside. But what I can tell you 
is that I know that there's so much love on the other side for people that, um, sorry. The people Chloe? that are still here. Yes, right? my dog is, yeah. my dog is chewing a bone, sorry. That's all right. Dog, we love dogs too. Plus, Jennifer and I, for those out there are curious, we have spoken to dogs on the flip side quite often. Yeah, we do quite often. Yeah. Yes. Or other pets, let's put it that way. And we've talked to a number of, including my own, well, you'll see that it's in Backstage Pass, my own, and in architecture, I spoke to my own dog that passed away 40 years ago. And he told me things that only he could have known. So yeah. that's, that's all true. thanks to Jennifer. They mimic their they mimic their owners in so many ways. All right, I, I would be lax if I didn't ask Bill Paxton, my old friend, if he wants to say anything, weigh in. <laughs> he said the next book's gonna be all about him. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. He said, Got your movie. You always said you were going to make a movie. That's true. <laughs> and Bill's referring to the interviews that we did with Bill Paxson, based on my knowing him for all these years. And then we had two other mediums also who interviewed Billy. Um, that's a film at Gaia, Gaia.com, talking to Bill Paxson. Yeah. So, all right, guys, listen, I can't I keep Jennifer all day. She's got to go save lives. So, Let's thank Luana and Billy and Harry Dean and Prince for coming through and your dad for giving us some insight and some direction. And we love you all. And yes. What else would you like to say, Jennifer? Anything? If you think more about love, and gratitude like we discussed in the video before i really did put it to practice what we learned it just changes everything it, it changes your electric magnetic field so you can hear more so you can tap into things more know that you're always connected even if you don't feel connected and don't hoard all the wine <laughs> okay don't Hoard the wine, man. All right, very good. Don't hoard the wine and the toilet Thank paper. Class. Thank you. Wash your hands. Thank we love you, you, class. We'll catch you on the flip side of this week. Yes. Love you, Bye. Jennifer. Thank you, dear. Love you. Okay. Love you more. Love you more. Bye.